Okay guys, I'd like to make a new tutorial on uh, how to water cool motherboards. I have a MSI Big Bang X Power 2. This is a current generation of motherboard. My previous tutorial was um, took place almost two years ago for Gigabyte Extreme LJ1366, which is by now became absolute product. So I think it's a good idea to refresh our skills on something newer. First thing that I would like to suggest to anybody who decided to venture into motherboard water cooling is to make sure that board is not dead on arrival because you will put substantial effort into removing heat sinks, placing your blocks, and you spend a few hours of work on this and at the end if board is dead you have to put everything back to remain it. So, Power it up, connect it all proper connections, put some memory, simple graphical card, make sure it works. I already did that, so we're not going to perform actual test. I had a separate uh, video on this. All we need just to remove all unnecessary parts from the motherboard um, and uh, start removing stock heat sinks, which will be replaced by water blocks after that. All right. I had a simple GPU card here that um, doesn't even require any power, so it was easy to connect. And uh, the only power source I required was actual motherboard itself. And CPU power. So all those parts we not require them anymore. And um, can be simply put somewhere aside. Also had improvised heat sink for my CPU because I, I don't even have LJ2011 heat sink at all because um, the version of processor I purchased was OEM version and it doesn't come with heat sinks at all. So I had modified the version of heat sink from LJ1156 and it works fine so during the test CPU barely hit 62 degrees there wasn't any danger at all but nevertheless it needs to be removed and cleaned we can do better job later but right now we just remove it and of course memory is not required at all okay so now we have a just board itself and uh, we can start to look into what it takes to remove the heat sink so let's flip it over and see So the, <coughs> the three screws, three screws that hold this, this heat sink in place, so we can see, yeah, actually two screws and one screw holds this part, so that will be easy. And for the MOSFETs, we have uh, one screw here, and it looks like two more screws from other side, yeah, in there. So this is pretty, pretty easy task. I think the MOSFET probably will be uh, easier to do at this point. So let me grab my screwdrivers and this. Okay guys, when you work on the motherboard, make sure you don't press too hard on uh, on any parts of it, because especially when it's in this position, like I'm showing you right now, this is a lot of uneven parts all over the board. So it's hard to give it uh, proper leveled um, support when it's upside down and um, if you try to press excessively this potentially can cause a damage take screws completely out here you go so both screws on both sides needs to be removed completely in order to in order to remove the heat sink so part one is done. 
now we need to unscrew three more screws to get rid of the other part. Oh, that's not good. Maybe you want to give some support for the motherboard from other side. If you have anti-static wrists, that wouldn't hurt. I'm kind of skipping on that, but if you want to be 100% safe, you may consider to use it. Some washers, I don't know if we need them, but I'll take them out. Okay, my heatsink already falling away. So, as you can see, on the chipset itself, it was just some sort of... Uh, this is actually thermal paste, but it wasn't even touching it. It's no mark. You can see, probably out of focus, but um, this part wasn't even touched. This can maybe better. See how shiny it is? So, <laughs> that's interesting. Well, anyways, we're replacing it. So, now it will be cooled absolutely perfectly fine. Okay, now we can put motherboard aside for a minute. And let's inspect uh, C no, oh, sorry, not CPU motherboard block I got from Xs PC. I would say actually I purchased it. I as Xs PC wasn't interested in sponsorship. So we have two pieces motherboard which will be installed separately, of course. Our thermal pods. And instruction, which we may want to check out, just to be sure how to do it. Okay, let's proceed with installation. What we need to do, at least in theory, to clean um, all chips that will be applied either with thermal paste or with the pods. There's actually only one chip that needs to be cleaned. Uh, but because heatsink didn't touch it, uh, actually nothing to clean here, but nevertheless, I use a small piece of microfiber to do so. There's another two little chips here that will be applied with the thermal pad. Um, they're pretty clean as well. And uh, raw those voltage regulators, MOSFET stuff okay so that's pretty easy the normal conditions took some effort but in my case this is weird but board is barely barely it's in contact so it's easy to do so according instruction i need to put one long um, thermal pod on those chips a little thermal pod on those two and put thermal gaze on on a on a microchip. And that's what um, I'm going to do now. Do not forget to remove protective film from. You see, hope it's in focus. From the pod, and film typically on both sides. Uh, doing it with your hand typically trickier than if you use some sort of sharp object like a utility knife. Let's see if it's at least long enough. Yeah, it's good. So let's simply position it there. And um, and we'll do the same for a longer pod as well. I'm a little bit tempted to use my own pods that I know have a high conductivity levels but as motherboard is not as uh, critical and heat producing as let's say CPU or 
or memory on on a GPU. I think I can live with whatever XSVC provided, and it definitely will work just fine. Uh, yeah, I put it a little bit too close towards only one end, so I need to reposition it slightly. Okay, All right. I'm trying not to be in the cam, so I do it a little bit from the distance, which is more awkward, but when you will do it yourself, you can put your face right into the thing without any problems. Well, interesting, it looks like thermal pad a little bit shorter than it should be. Uh, so I have a little bit trouble to make sure it's touching hands of both all chips but I stretch it a little bit and um, now it seems like okay all right so what we need to do is um, take a um, block and put it on try to lower block exactly on the position it's supposed to be and this way you wouldn't move thermal pad under it and it should be in the right position so we need to take back um, the screws that were used on the original heat sink and put block into position Try to hold it steady uh, so it doesn't doesn't move anywhere, and um, don't go all the way because, it, as you remember, there is other screw on the other side, and I believe for that screw we need to use this little screw provided with the package. Let's verify it by the manual. Yes. Please use supplied screw in position number two. So that's what we're going to do. Oh, I see. There's no wonder screw didn't go, it's just because it wasn't aligned properly. Well, it doesn't seem problem in this particular case, but also I would like to advise you that when you put um, blocks on the motherboard, especially long ones like this, make sure that when you tighten the, your screws, you don't get excessive bending of the motherboard. At least in the past, that could be the case. I remember putting all blocks on the gigabyte board and it was all like wrapped warped like this looking on this board after installation of uh, mosfet block is still perfectly straight just great i also can see that um, my thermal pod gets squished properly and this uh, it's a good contact for it of course we can verify it later when we power up motherboard and see what the kind of temperatures we're getting but after all hardware installed it could be a little bit too hard to fix it on a later date okay as you can see it wasn't wasn't that difficult at all uh, the last part we need to install is a uh, final block and i have I have the thermal pad in place and all I need to add a little bit of um, of the thermal grids which is supplied with a block but I have my MX4 that I just use here that should work fine
This part would be a little bit more tricky because you put block on top and then you should carefully flip the board and um, and put all three screws in place. Again, uh, watch for for motherboard bending. Well, I guess I could do it better, but um, it's now in place. And I take three screws in my hand. Actually, no, I'll put it here. Try to hold block steady. Flip motherboard. And start putting screws in places. Well, whatever we do, previous heat sink haven't even touched anything, so we definitely should have improvement just because of that. As I expect that water block actually will be touching all proper places. Well, nevertheless, it barely took me half an hour to do the entire job with all talking. So, um, this probably was easiest installation so far. I don't see any warping on motherboard. Perfectly stays perfectly straight, which is great. And um, so that's all we need. The next step will be install all memory slots, memory blocks, CPU block, and figure out all connections we need to do in order to connect all this water cooling hardware together in some sort of nice um, tube routing, which I have no idea how to do, but that will be next video.